Glad Rags on and look trendy like us. Hip and happening birthdays <laughs> coming up after the tent stop on Playbus. Patch. It's a Playbus. But where does it go? Where does it stop? Watch for the sign of the lollipop. is out today to find a patch to stop and play. Where will it be? Who will she meet? Is Peggy visiting the end of your street? Peggy's got off the bus, but where's she stopped today? Can you guess? I'll give you a few clues. It's a place with tall trees, big nests made out of sticks, and a lot of noise. She's at a rookery. That's a place where a lot of rooks build their nests. A sort of rook village. This rookery's at the end of a garden. Peggy wants to take a look round. I'll have to help her down first. Why don't you look round with her? Five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. Thirty rooks nest. The rooks are nesting high this year, means it's going to be a good summer. I wonder how the rooks recognise their own nest. They make their nest out of twigs and they're stuck together with soil and they line them with either leaves or moss or wool to make them snug for the eggs. Rooks' eggs are sort of bluish-grey colour and they're speckled with brown. But they've hatched now and the young ones are just learning to fly. Apart from the noise, you can tell there's a rookery up there by looking for clues underneath the trees. And there's plenty of bird droppings. And look, there's a rook's feather. Can you see? Black and shiny. And look, the willow twig. There's lots of them. So that means the rooks must be making a nest with willow. So there must be a willow tree around here. Ah, there they are. That's where they must have collected their twigs. Oh, what sort of tree is this? It's an apple tree and it's covered in blossom. When the petals fall off, the centre swells up and becomes the apple. And birds definitely like those. Not all birds live in the top of trees. Some nest in hedges as well. And Richard, who lives here, told me there was a nest around here somewhere. It's an old nest, so we can take a look at it. Where is it? Ah, here it is. Doesn't look like a bird's lived there for a long time. If you find a nest, you shouldn't disturb it, because otherwise the mother bird will get frightened and leave it. Peggy Patch has found a young creature to say hello to. Say hello to this creature. A creature with big webbed feet, downy feathers, tiny wings, who hatched out of an egg. It's a gosling. A gosling is a young goose. These goslings are about two weeks old and they're all fluffy. When they get older, they look like this. Some people have guard geese instead of guard dogs because they make a lot of hissing sound when they're adults.
Can you see the ducklings on the pond? They're a bit older, they're about six weeks old, and they're just starting to get their adult feathers. They all hatch out of eggs. Here's an egg. Do you know what sort of egg this is? It's a hen's egg, but it won't hatch into a chick, because only special eggs hatch out. It takes a lot of effort to hatch out of an egg. When the chick's grown inside, it pecks away at the shell until it finally breaks through. But it's ever so tired, and it's also wet, so it takes a bit of a while before it gets fluffy, like these goslings. Peggy knows what a chick looks like hatching out of an egg. Peg book. Down on Broom Common, there's someone very bright. When people make a mess of things, he always puts it right. His plans are most ingenious, they cause a good few shocks. Who is it? Fernando the Fox. Fernando the fox was dozing in his den, dreaming of the dustbins he would raid that night, when he was woken by a half grunt, half sob. It was Hannah, the pig, who lived with her piglets on the farm at the edge of the common. Fernando, I need help so badly, she wailed, and a large tear rolled down her snout. Tell me about it, Fernando replied. Well, uh, Mr and Mrs Sarpus have moved into the house overlooking our field and they are trying to make the farmer get rid of us. They say we smell and they have complained to the council, whatever that is. Don't worry, said Fernando. I'll think of a plan and my plans are famous. You'll see it will be they who move, not you. So Hannah returned to her piglets, feeling happier than she had in weeks. If you're making plans, you need me shrieked Jerry the Jay from a tree above. First of all, I need some peace to think, Fernando barked back. That night, Mr and Mrs Sarpus had just gone to sleep when they were jolted up by a clatter and a clang. Somebody is at the dustbin, cried Mrs Sarpus. Those greedy pigs, if I catch them, said Mr Sarpus, leaping out of bed. He ran downstairs and out of the back door where he tripped over the dustbin lid and sat down on a nasty mess of last night's fish skins and some old vegetables. Never, said the farmer when Mr Sarpus complained. Pigs don't go for dustbins. Certainly this lot can't. Look for yourself. I fenced them in so well on account of your objecting to them, there's no way they could get out. Foxes, they're your culprits. Crafty old things. Mr Sarpus scowled at the pigs, then stamped off home, where he was met by Mrs Sarpus holding his pyjamas. Just look at these! I had to wash them three times to get the smell out. I hung them up in the garden, and look! The pyjamas were covered in bird droppings. As Mr Sarpus wrinkled up his nose, there was a squawk from above, and another dollop landed on his head. There! And so it went on. Every night, Mr and Mrs Sarpus were woken by the clatter of their dustbin and never could Mr Sarpus get down quick enough to catch the culprit. Anything left in the garden, deck chairs, newspapers, washing, was torn to tatters, eaten or covered in bird droppings. Great holes appeared in the rose bed overnight. The final crunch came when Mrs Sarpus took off her diamond ring to do the washing up, put it on the windowsill by the sink and looked up to see a jay flying off with it. 
I refuse to stay in this house any longer, she said to Mr. Sarpus. Go and put it up for sale this minute. Meantime, I shall start packing our things and we'll go to stay with my sister. Later, as Mr. and Mrs. Sarpus drove off, the farmer opened the pen to let Hannah and her piglets run the full length of their field. Luckily, the family who bought the house were very fond of pigs and liked to stand at the bottom of their garden and lean over the fence to scratch Hannah's back. I think we did a pretty good job there, Fernando said. Agreed, said Jerry. Now, I must go and settle down for a good day's sleep. Peggy Patch's puzzle. Why are there twigs, milk bottle tops, tin cans and a paper bird in the garden below the rookery? to stop the birds eating the seeds and young plants. The twigs are here because they make it difficult for the birds to land on the ground and peck at the seeds. As the milk bottle tops move in the breeze, they shine and rattle and scare the birds away. And the tin cans are the same. They make a good noise. And this is a clever one. The shadow of the paper bird scares the smaller birds away. Caw, 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 caw. Mm. Do you want a pocket? So, what else scares birds then? Scared birds. Yes, right. Is this his body? Yes. yes. Are we ready for him then? Ready to put his jacket on? Yes. Right then, pop your pens away and. Right, if one of you wants to lift this up, see if you can put his neck through there. If you take one that end, Natasha, you hold that. You come round here and pull it this side, Jodie. Come round here and you pull it. That's it. Right, I'll put my finger in the middle. And then, which we... Tie it over. Tie that one over. In there. And then you pull it that side again, Natasha. And you pull it that side, Jodie. Yes, there we are. There's a belt. Right, Richard, if you want to hold on to that, I'll get some hands. And do you want to put one around this side then, Paul? Come around that side and put a hand on over here. Going on. Yep. Yep. That's it. What's missing? The head. 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 Got an idea for how to make a head. A balloon. And if I try and blow up this balloon down there so the hat will stick on it when I blow it up, do you think that'll work? Yeah. Yes. We've got to put the mind on it. We'll, we'll draw them on in a minute. Right, here goes. for him. Stop, he? he is, isn't he? What should we do? Um, pass another, another stick. And we'll see if we can put another stick up the back of his head. Bring it round the back here. I hope he does the balloon doesn't burst. We'll have to blow up another one, won't we? Mm. Right. Oh! <laughs> I hear the <laughs> Shall we try that again? Yeah. <laughs> I think we should put the hat on top, the thing in there, and then blow and the balloon up. And then blow the balloon up. Right then. Hopefully it pops again. I've got two 
Apparently it doesn't pop. I don't know how we're going to draw um, eyes on because of the once we've tried to put the, um, the balloon, the, um, the, probably the balloon will burst. Well, we hope not. There we are. Tuck that down there. That's it. Rip the lid. Yeah, the I think we're going to stick some this time. Tie this He's round got a here. There. Yes? Yeah, right, yeah. should we take him over to the garden then? Yeah. Come on then. this, pictures of that. I like your pictures, says Peggy Patch. Something you do or something you see. Why not draw it? Maybe send it to me. I've made a patchwork of fields, but it needs somebody else. Scarecrow. Oh, don't forget the gosling. A creature with big webbed feet, downy feathers, tiny wings, who hatched out of an egg. Oh, the bus is here. I better tell Peggy. Peggy, say goodbye. Catch the bus. Peggy's off to find us another patch for next week. See you there. Goodbye. <laughs>